report it and we can, I commend this bill to the House. Yeah, yeah. The Honourable Mark Mitchell. Mr Speaker, uh, I just, I'm very happy to stand and take a call um, on the Criminal Cases Review Commission Bill. I just want to address um, very quickly the last comment that the, uh, that the last member made around the um, consultation that was done. And it seems to, it has actually been very broad. And I think that in principle, um, all of those groups would actually agree that if we could see a mechanism put in place that is likely to prevent or stop uh, miscarriages of justice inside our justice system, we'd all agree that that would be a good thing to do. The, the, only, the only concern that I have is the one group that's missing, it seems to be a, um, a trend that is developing in the debates that we have in this House around our criminal justice system, is uh, victims and how this process is going to fit alongside of them and what sort of voice are they going to have. And one of the big concerns that, um, that I have with the legislation is that, um, is that the application of the Official Information Act 1982, the Commission is going to be exempt from anyone being able to make an OIA application to actually get visibility on the communication that is happening between the Commission and, um, and anyone that they're engaging with. And I think that, that is a, uh, that's a poor step in the wrong direction in terms of at least having some transparency around how the Commission is working and what they're doing. And I think the reason, Mr Speaker, why this is so important is because um, uh, if you look at the makeup or the proposed makeup of the Commission, you are going to have commissioners sitting on there, and of course they can range from anywhere from three through to seven. And so if, if, for example, we did take the scenario where there were three commissioners appointed and one or two of those actually had no legal background, then you've now got a commission with extraordinarily wide-ranging powers that aren't subject to the OIA that are going to make, be making decisions on, on, um, on cases inside our criminal justice system. So um, these, are, these are important points. These are points that I want to raise. Um, I would invite the opposition members to take a call on this, and, and, and if I'm wrong, um, can you point out to me where I'm going wrong and actually give us some confidence that we're not going to create a situation whereby you've got a commission with extraordinary powers that are actually uh, making decisions on our judicial system with people that necessarily don't have a legal background or the proper training or background to be able to do that. And at the same time, we're not able to, to, going to be, the people of New Zealand are not going to be able to get visibility on actually what's happening because they're exempt from the uh, Official Information Act. I think these are, are, are important questions that need to be answered because the fact of the matter is, and I'll come back again to that uh, original, for, for the comments that were made by the New Zealand First Member that spoke before I did is that if you're going to set up a commission like this and they're going to investigate possible miscarriages of justice, which is very important, you can almost guarantee that behind every crime there are victims and there are stakeholders and people that have an interest in it, and they should, have a clear, they should be entitled to have a clear understanding of what is happening and what is going on inside of that review. The other thing that I am very worried about, and uh, the Honourable Dr Nick Smith uh, raised it, is the thresholds. <laughs> involved. Because in my view, this commission, if it's established, is going to be swamped very, very quickly with a lot of applications from a lot of people that have been convicted of something that feel aggrieved and feel like there's been a miscarriage of justice. So I'd like to know, I'd like someone to stand uh, and, ta and take a call on this and explain to us in this House how that process is going to work before you have a commission that is going to cost $2.3 million annually to run, that is going to be so bogged down uh, with their own workload that what's going to happen is it's actually going to slow down justice for everyone. It's going to create um, uh, blockages, blockages in the system uh, because you're going to have part of it that isn't going to be able to actually process and deal with cases that are brought to it to be reviewed. So I think that this is actually a really important critical part of the bill is explain to us what the criteria is going to be. Is it going to be people that have faced charges, uh, minor charges under the Summary Offences Act? Is it going to be only for people that have been charged with serious offences with, imprisonment, with uh, uh, prison terms of two years or more under the Crimes Act? 
uh, because this is going to be critically important to how this Commission is going to function. So, Mr Speaker, these really are the two main issues that I wanted to raise uh, in the House today. Uh, I would ask the opposition or the next, uh, 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 sorry, the next government uh, member that takes a call on this bill to just talk us through and take us through the issues that I've uh, highlighted so that we can at least have some comfort and start working through this bill to see whether or not we land in a place where we think that, number one, it's actually going to add something uh, and it's going uh, to bring some, um, some added benefit to our criminal justice system and how we deal with miscarriages of justice, because although we've got one of the best criminal justice systems in the world, without a doubt, it is not perfect. And anything to do with human beings will never be perfect. There's gonna, there are going to be mistakes made, without a doubt. But, uh, but, but please, someone take a call and, and address the issues that I've raised and show us clearly, demonstrate clearly, how the Criminal Cases Review Commission Bill is actually going to make our criminal justice better, safer, and isn't actually going to clog it up, and isn't actually going to create a body that, number one, has not got the expertise in it to be able to make, start making these decisions, and number two, why there's not going to be transparency around it, why they're not going to be subject to the uh, overseas, uh, sorry, the Official Information Act. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's um, exciting for me to write.